uh, particularly the fact that I have formally came to pay my respect to our great party. Uh, I have left APC when the party asked that all its members must go to uh, the validation exercise and must register. And eventually I took the membership of the party, uh, PDP, just February 2nd, 2021. Um, I'm not leaving APC for any reason other than because of the bad governance that we have witnessed in the state. Particularly, we are all witness to the fact that what we are witnessing in Gombe today is a government of a person, a person for a person. Not government of the people for the people. This is also an administration that has engaged in callous statements that goes as far as inciting uh, unrest in the state. From Tangale Waja to Duku, local government area, and come back to go to Emotuleba. We are all one people in the state. There is no division, division in the state. Uh, we are all the same people. We are interwoven, interrelated. Leadership is a sacred trust that has been entrusted by our forefathers in our hands. And that trust must be carried along and must be protected if need be at whatever cost so that our children and the next generation will carry on this particular uh, uh, trust to their own children and to their generation. I have uh, Gombe State is a PDP state. Gombe State, I have traveled around the state. The entire membership of the state is in, the, in terms of followership for political party and people who are on ground are completely uh, uh, people of PDP. The number of people I come with is irrelevant at this material time because people in this state believe in good governance and we have bad governance in the state and every single individual that you go around the state will be sure that you find out that they are actually people of PDP. Now that is not the point. Let me point out three separate things that I can point to. When you have leadership that incite violence, that do not care about the youth or the development of the youth, that does not give opportunity to our women and girls as much as we do give opportunity to our men and boys, that when you have a leadership that only uh, strive on threats, our answer to them is very clear. PDP will form government in 2023, and if need be, we will respond to them in the language they best understand. So, that you see here as a family, as I mentioned to you, are people who are born in the state, studied in the state, went to primary school in the state, went to secondary schools in the state, and had been sponsored and had been given scholarship by the state. We have a moral obligation to come back. We are not bastards, as might be referred to in some quarters. We are full-blown indigenous of this state, and we have enough members in PDP that can compete and take over power in 2020. So this message, I need to send it very clear to the people that think that they want to see who will come out of contest for governorship. PDP is the best party that we know in the state. It has the followership, it has credible candidates, credible people um, of irrefutable uh, character, uh, integrity, and therefore I want to pass this message very clear that we are prepared to take over governance and we have enough credible people that will take over governance of the state come 2023. It's very clear that the fathers and the founding fathers of this state uh, cannot be in a way and manner or cannot be disrespected in a way and manner in which we can call our traditional rulers and actually uh, speak down at them or talk down at them. We will not allow that to happen. 
our traditional institutions are sacred institutions that we are prepared to protect at all costs. And that increasing salaries after you disrespect uh, to our traditional rulers does not tell anything. What we want is respect for our traditional institutions that has established these emirates and have also made other kingdoms who are living here that have lived harmoniously together over the years and have come to form what we what we what we know today as communist state. Thank you, you very your Excellency. Uh, over time, after it, the infant mortality rate is very is there for you to. It speaks volumes. The maternal mortality rate speaks volumes. If you look at the the the, the, the rate of our infrastructure, the level of our infrastructure in the state, particularly in healthcare, speaks volumes. Not only healthcare, across the state, all other social services have crumbled. If you look at our education sector, I'll give you an example. We have 42 secondary schools in Bombay State. We have 16,411 students today in those 42 secondary schools. The state government only spends 49 million naira, 916,000 plus some change on top, to feed them for a whole year. That means that the state government spends only 8 naira a day per child to spend a child, or 2 naira 70 kobo per meal uh, for the 3 square meals in a day. That is unacceptable. For me to buy a cup of pap, I will spend nowhere less than 100 naira. For me to buy Accra, I will spend nowhere less than 300 naira. How do you expect that a state gov government will sit down and spend only 49 million naira for a whole year on 16,411 students and expect something to good to come out of our education system? I don't think we are going to speak that. How do you entertain them in green or in yellow or in whatever colors? This the same things I have seen in 2018 is the same things I'm seeing today. And therefore, you know very well that our social infrastructure completely has crumbled in this state. We are not going to talk about economy today. We will come to that uh, at the appropriate time. But I can tell you that we are prepared to tell the indigenous of the state that self-aggrandizing and accumulation of wealth by one individual cannot solve our problem and we are prepared to protect our commonwealth. Your, your, your yes, yes, are just like the Bombay is now the uh, uh, ease of doing business number one yes, and the rest. So how do you uh, reconcile this bad governance and uh, award outside the state? So, oh, well, I'll answer that. <laughs> Please, just a minute. Um, the ease of doing business, I am sure you are a better judge. Whether Gombe State today is in a play, in a position to say, to speak about his doing business, I can give you an example. Our businessmen have actually their capital is dissipated completely. Recently, there is a massive uh, 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 withdrawal of ownership of lands that belongs to orphans, belongs to uh, businessmen in Gombe, belongs to. Uh, families belongs to so many people who have invested. Do you call that ease of doing business? Do you call that ease? Of, who will come and invest in Gombe? If I will invest my capital, if I will invest my her inheritance in purchasing of or in investing in doing business, and then suddenly government policy comes and takes it, do you, do you, do you call that ease of doing business? So you are a better job, my, my friend. Thank you. 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 Thank you.